Um, I'm going to talk about um, a small project uh, that starts after B. This is a small talk that uh, Pocho presented works. So B is working now pretty decently, very good. Uh, it, it, th this is a project that's very long. We've been working and presenting on the development of the VM for 10 years straight, I believe it is. Uh, there's also another track working on the image, and this probably began like 13 or 15 years ago, slowly and taking rhythm, and now it's a full-blown VM image small talk system, all right? Uh, so what I'm going to present is just a toy project uh, that started three months ago of trying to port B, which is originally for Windows, to Linux, all right? So I do start with B working, and what I'm doing is porting it to Linux. So that's <laughs> why it's called Linux, all right? Uh, so, um, a very brief introduction, I know you can't read there, of what's B. B is um, a small talk implementation that's not written in using legacy tools, or maybe yes, because it's written in a very old language. So, uh, it's it's uh, not written using assembly language, it's not, we didn't develop any special language for building the VM, we developed it in Smalltalk. <laughs> um, so it's big, all right? It's big. Uh, somewhere there are all the, the bytecodes somewhere. Th there's all the bytecodes for every bytecode. There must be somewhere. Well, this one is not used. So. The, 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 the implement, let's see. Push. These are all complex, but there's a method that generates, renders the bytecode into assembly. Assembly. There are now two implementations of this. One is this one that starts from bytecodes, and then there's another one that starts from the AST that's uh, more optimized. And th th there is no interpreter, so there's just a JIT. All right. Um, the nativizer, we call it. And then, since the beginning, we knew that once we can generate, originally this was a more regular small talk, but since the beginning, we knew that if we could generate assembly, we could just generate the whole thing, right? And then we also knew that we could generate the whole thing maybe for, for Windows or for Linux. We started with Windows um, somewhere. There's huge amounts of code for implementing Windows executables, like P. And so um, we thought, OK, let's try to walk that path. All right? So we, we, fer we thought, can you read? Yeah. The first step would be to write the assembly, the instruction code, instructions into an ELF file. And then, of course, we have to debug it. So let's better think a bit about that. And then this particular motor has one very interesting quality is that all the interface with the operating system is implemented using FFI. It's not implemented in primitives. Am I right? Yes. So uh, this is what, like, is, that's not so common. Usually there are many primitives that implement the interface to the operating system. But this, we will get back to this. This is very interesting. So, so the next step for us was to, to see how we could implement FFI, how complex or easy it would be, and how, how much code we needed, whether it could be very compatible with what we had or completely new. And then, after we knew we could execute ELF files on Linux, and we knew we could interface with libraries, then it's everything from there is to build the OS abstraction and abstract the OS from the VM, the JIT code, 
will be just be executable, and if we solve the interface with the OS, maybe we'll be done. Of course, reality is a bit different than plans, though the path kind of went the same, the same direction, all right? Um, nothing new. We had to do a few tries to get to an implementation, all right? So the first idea was to do the same we did for Windows, uh, which is to implement the ELF file writer by implementing all the ELF specification. <laughs> all right? Yeah. Well, you know, Windows PE are pretty complex, but we were young at that time. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we had more than three months for the conference. So anyway, we went a fairly deep path up to the point where we can build, manipulate, execute, F executables, and then we thought, uh, what's the next step? We want to debug. So let's add debugging information or symbol information. Uh, okay, let's not. That tends to be quite complex, all right? So uh, we took a detour there we completely discarded all this ELF implementation that took so long, and we wrote a new one that has only very few methods, and, well, uses tools already existing to generate the ELF. Why not? I mean, later we can do something else. With this, we, we really didn't want to work on this. We wanted to work on the other part. So um, at the end, all right, this is a small window, but uh, the, the output oh, after uh, nativizing um, the, the VM or the execution in Shine, as we should call it, is Oh, ah, uh, me. It's um, a binary blob of the assembly plus a shell script. Um, uh, 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 mm, mm, mm. With all the symbols, can you read a bit? Yeah, all the symbols. Just the name of the symbol and the address of the symbol. All right. And it's very long, but it's very easy to write from Smalltalk because it's all automatic, right? So I don't care. So this, we have a, a header for the script, and then there's a footer for the script, and then for every line, there's a symbol, and then there's, of course, the entry point, all right? So we have all this information inside because we are building this. So we have all the symbols, we have everything. We dump it, and then we generate a shell script, and when we execute it, it generates um, an F. It's 30, 32 bits. We only have 32 bit support so far. All right? So, yes. I had a slide, just in case. <laughs> uh, but then we, we went a bit further. Uh, we went, OK, all right, let's start moving on. Let's start trying FFI. There are a few things to do FFI on Unix that are the main tool. Uh, the two functions, DL open and DL sim. And while it's possible to resolve them parsing the ELF header in memory is more, it's easier to just pass them to the executable small talk in, uh, in memory, all right? So we started playing with a very small, this small glue code here that passes the environment to the running small talk. And there are a few, a few, very few things to pass around, the arguments, and then we will pass DL open and DL sim. But I wanted to try with something smaller, so I pass it 
writes. All right? Can you read? No, this is hard to read, but all right. But let's let's try this then. Um, no, not this one. This one I can close now. Uh, so we have. Uh, uh, the entry point will be this. This is the main entry point into the small to code. This is B main. Remember, I exported the entry point. This is B main, and it takes an environment. If you were in one of our talks, you know we, we, we have something called under primitives that are very native uh, messages. So we take the environment and kind of transform it into something that can be managed with inside Smalltalk. Primarily because this will be an address in the stack that's more than 31 bits. So we need to do something, all right? And then uh, we get the current B loader, set the environment, and start. So let's go to the instance side and set the environment. Thus obviously nothing, and so then it starts, all right? This is a bit of a trick, but this is to set the frame pointer, EBP, to something zero. Um, this is to set EGI, which is something used in the compile methods to hold the environment for some particular bytecodes, like blocks or structures, and then we start. And, and here, this is the startup of the system, or let's see, um, this is the startup of the system for a Windows version, all right? And this is the startup of the system, whoa, for a Linux version. It's pretty similar, all right? So we, sh we are already running what we wanted to run, all right? But uh, this is the end of the movie. Let's start with something smaller. Let's see if we are actually executing our, our code. So this, this is what I'm going to do, all right? Instead of calling the full startup, I had um, five different versions of the startup, one that just does a halt, one that just gets from the environment, the pointer to write, and sets the FFI for it, and then just uses it. All right. So this is to test, and then enters into an infinite loop. This is to test. I'm passing the pointer in. The pointer is retrieved correctly. The FFI mechanism is initialized properly, and that I can call a native method. All right. But let's first start with this one. Um, all right, uh, and I think uh, generating the binary takes 70 seconds, so I pre-generated a bunch. This one, I execute, and it says trace breakpoint. Let's see. That's good, yeah. Let's see when we debug it, what's going on. Right, and it's. It, <laughs> it's it's there. This is a breakpoint, and what's very interesting is that if we get the native stack, we get to see the actual symbols. This is because we exported all the symbols with object copy. All right. With the shell script, right. And th this is very, very helpful for debugging. Otherwise, it'd be killing. And we can do more things like disassemble. All right. Uh, here, there's the prologue, saving the receiver, moving the receiver to the receiver, to self, actually, pushing. I don't know what. And then loading one, this is the small integer one, into the receiver, and well, sending the under primitive to that. Oh, so it, it is really this method here. I believe I can do this probably. Oh no, not really. 
it won't show the assembly. Anyway, so, okay, so this is the first one. Uh, let's see. Wait, wait. And the second one, as I said, uh, we get the environment, from the environment, what the glue coat in main passes to the uh, entry point, we get, right, and let's see what this, fun this method does. Rawr. Uh, it looks up the selector in the library, gets the FFI data from the method, the compile method, and then uh, sets uh, the address in the FFI data using an under primitive. All right. Uh, this is because the address might be a long, in, a large integer, not just a small integer. So th this translates to just a move under the hood, but this is how we um, write it. All right, and then we call, we call, actually we call F FD write, which is really calling FD write count, which is just the FFI. This pragma means right. This is really not meaningful at this point because I'm setting the pointer manually, all right? It could be whatever name because I'm setting the pointer manually. Just a detail. Uh, let's see. And then it enters an infinite loop, all right? Just to have fun. Uh, so, all right. Uh, let's see what's going on. You get tired of clapping. <laughs> there are many of those. So it's running there. When I break it, uh, let's see the code for this. This is going to be a bit longer. It's pretty long, right? Um, let's see, let's see. Oh. Much better. Oh. oh, here. That's the pointer. Actually, let's do this. All right, it's loading true. And then checking whether what's just loaded is true. And if it's the same, it jumps back up, all right? But that's exactly, exactly what it says here, all right? So it makes sense. Let's see what's coming next. Uh, all right, we can, do, we can execute our code. We can do FFI. And there are, as I said, two particular functions that we need to call, really. Uh, DL open and DL sim. This, these are for opening a library and for getting the address of a symbol, a function in the library. All right? The mechanism is just the same. I was passing in write. Now I'm passing in DL open and DL sim. All right? Of course, I have to change up here. Um, it's all here. I have to change, yeah. I have to change. Uh, that I'm getting two values from the environment, and then I'm set, setting these two FFI methods to point to the addresses I've got from the glue code in DL. So, all right? And then just to try it here, just to try it, yeah, I had, I had this behavior wrapped in a, in a method, yeah, what? Just to try it. I'm, I'm loading libseed. Why libseed? Because it's, it wasn't, I know it is not loaded by default. I'm, I'm going to step through it and I'm going to see that it's loaded. All right? So, woo! All right. All right. Let's see. Mm, let's set a breakpoint at mm, B. 
throw that in. Oops. Really? Is it? All right. There's no Let's see. And I run. No, sorry. I continue. And now there is libc. So DL open is actually working. Good. All right. I think I'm going to skip a few demos. But after this, I created the Linux dynamic library, which is um, a subclass of dynamic library. The, the library is used for Windows. That implements only two methods. One, in the class side, for opening, using DL open, and one in the instance side using DL sim to get the symbol. And this is a subclass of dynamic library where all the li Windows libraries live. All right? And with this, it's enough to implement exit like this and close like this just by declaring the file name of the library on the class side, all right? This is all from B. It's not like it was there. I'm just reusing it. We had to do a few tweaks. Um, so I'm just going to do this. Quick does not exist, but you can see there's only one more. So this one writes a message and then exits 42. I'm going to skip debugging it. Writes a message and then exits. So, 42. So, and for this, I did not set the address of write and exit manually. I'm leaving all the framework to solve it. All right? And then we have a fifth one here. That is now the full thing, all right? And let's see what happens. The, mm, it crashes. Why? To him? It crashes. Where does it crash? Calling an FFI. Uh, calling virtual log from kernel 32. All right? Makes sense. There's no kernel 32 here. So <laughs> let's see. How does B communicate to the world? I said it's only using FFI, and it's all implemented in small to code. So we need to find a, a, a nice abstraction to isolate the always specific implementation and to make it short, we decided to just go with the abstraction we already had, which is uh, this one. Kernel DLL as an abstraction of some sub API of what's needed to access the OS. User DLL as an abstraction to some API. So we went and created a kernel DLL Linux adapter implementing, for example, uh, create file, calling, calling open from libc. Create file is to open a file. It implements allocate, uh, no, actually heap create as nothing, because in Linux you don't need to create a heap. It implements heap free, calling free. It implements heap alloc, etc. And it implements virtual alloc, a bit complex, because we manage internally the regions to be sure they are allocating lower memory space, more detail, and so on. Um, so after implementing quite a few, we got to some point uh, here where we can run and get a stack trace properly, not from GDB, but from 
B itself. And it's actually very deep. It's when it's trying to, to, load, to load the library. All right? It's trying to load another library, a second library. And at this point, we can run now all the tests we have. It's just a subset of the test. It's not all the B tests. It's the test to see whether the generated binary is properly generated, and that's what it has to do. All right? And these are the same tests we run for Windows, now running on Linux, generating an executable, and executing it on Linux. You might now wonder what's going on here. This is the, the Windows version running on Wine, right? My machine is Linux, but, so, but this is the Windows version running on Wine, generating a binary and executing the Linux bina binary through some Wine magic. And if we see, I don't know if you can see the names there, but most of these, a few of these, Actually, this one is interesting. This one fails. Um, let's see. Uh, this is the same that the test does, all right? And it actually, it does print some statistics and stuff, and then it fails. Uh, it fails. Up here, actually, Be because it tries to execute query performance counter from kernel DLL. So it's just another API call, right? And so if we continue, we get a bit further, I believe. Um, well, this one is actually running pretty good if, if we run it. It runs very well until it loads a new library. But if, you, if we see, actually take a look at the stack trace, it's an assert. It's not really so bad. It's an assert. All right? And at this point, and previously, I sent Pocho an email, a very long email, saying what's going on. Hey, I'm doing this. I'm getting into an assert. Paste. And he just comes back saying, yeah, probably the address you are returning is too high. All right. Because we only have 32 bits for small integers. So if the return address is higher, we have a problem. We could solve that, but it's easy to avoid it. <laughs> Actually, if we do take a look at what's going on in the addresses somewhere over somewhere. Mm. Mm -hmm. This one is returning a very high address. Actually, because the previous, because the size is not aligned. That's something, all right? So we then uh, re-implement allocate range, no, some, something to actually align the size here. Mm -hmm. Virtual lock, is it, maybe? Yeah, here, self-align size, like that. And we align the sizes to a page size, so mmap can return a line size. And then, so we build again and get to the latest and run it. And this is what actually happened to me. I just saw that and ran it and got a console. Wow. <laughs> All right. So now. We, we can say we do have some sort of B running on Linux. Very limited, all right? Uh, I was going to show you that we can remotely debug this with what Pocho showed earlier, but he showed it. So we can remotely debug this up to some limits, all right? And so what now? I don't know. I was just playing, really. If this is a very old project, a sub-project of a very old project that we had parked for some time, and it was time to come back to it. After a few weeks, um, when we got it running, Pocho got the same framework, the same actually division from the Windows and the Linux thing, and um, wrote the Binos version, which is 
after doing the separation comes easily plus some make five tricks future I don't know 64 bits is kind of different implementing sockets and HTTP I say is trivial uh, implementing the nose version implementing OSX version why not GUI I say that's the most complicated Pocho insists we don't want GUIs on Linux because it's to be run on servers, right? This implementation, I don't know. And I guess if you want to experiment, eventually, not so far in the future, this is going to be released. Um, so maybe you decide what. Um, so questions? Thank you very much. Yes, 64-bit uh, ARM support, other microprocessors are not there. We need to actually re-implement the assembly uh, as we have it. It's not like we have to start from scratch, but it's not like there's nothing to do. So it's a lot of work. We haven't tried. But after seeing, what's your name? VH Moto 9. Alex. Alex, sorry. After seeing Alex talk and understanding what he's doing, maybe we can target uh, LVVM IO as a native target and then use that to go to other platform. I don't know. Uh, 64 bits, I think it's in the near future. Uh, and then after having one separation of the architecture, I think the, the second one would be easier, the third one. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah? So, I was going to ask you a question, which box in the record do you use? Is it your open I mean, CPU or the record? Oh, it's around, yes. Okay. It's a simple, common pattern kind of thing. It's around, it's very simple. It's meant for the bytecodes we have. And actually, there's another, I'm sorry. That, that's the first one. Uh, there's a second one that is an uh, optimizing assembly. I think it also uses its own assembly generation in general. It, it uses the same assembly generation in general, but does a sort of optimization things on the ASP. So, so yeah, it's on. Uh, but it doesn't have to be much different from the one that was already existing for Windows, right? No, it's no, no, no. I, I, I should show you everything I did for Linux. Like all you saw here is all I did for having Linux, starting from the Windows version. Right? I, I haven't done anything else. Like this is what I did. Or oh, maybe a few more. There's one thing about the thread, local storage, but it's very subtle. Um, other questions? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask a question which Martin asked me. How do you implement autoscope? Autoscope? Return? Yes. It is implemented. It, it, I believe now all primitives are implemented within the system itself in Smalltalk, at most using these under primitives, which are messages that um, do not. Pay attention to the class of the receiver, like it's the same for everyone, and some actually imply a specific assembly implementation, but it's not all there. It, like, oh, oh, there's a garbage, this is not what I'm talking about, but it's. Can you show the class? Yes, actually, I have, if you can tell me, yes. I mean, that, that's in the Vico. Ah, the, and you mean the primitive? Yeah. All right. <laughs> this one? Is it local return? No local return. Uh, it gets environments, the metal environments, and 
don't know. Uh, unwinds the stack very lightly. Yeah, unwinds the stack. And he gets the marker. And I mean, it's implemented here. It is implemented. I don't know actually what detail of the answer you like, but I, I think it's interesting to take a look at the code if you want, if you can. Uh, uh, the, the other day when uh, we were seeing the talk on garbage collection, it was also very interesting. Uh, You see? Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, we, we, all the garbage collectors are implemented here, and we wanted to see whether the implementation we have was the, the one that was shown here, and it was actually. Uh, is, isn't it? Marcus? Yeah, garbage We have the mark and compact, this is a multi-threaded queue, this is actually, but I mean, it's all here. Um, and and uh, through all the talks, I also opened it to see whether our implementation was similar, like the females, we went to see, and we actually have a queue uh, somewhere. It's a, there's a queue, and it's, it's not recursive, but it's a loop until the queue is. Uh, Reach a fixed point. Right, the fixed point of it. Right, right. So, so, so we took a look at that, and uh, it's all small, middle, and, and it's, it, it works, and it's performing. There are presentations from last year showing performance, and the coverage is pretty good. I don't know. Oh, I have a question for you. I think. Why do we have so many VM pods? I mean, not, not, like, my answer is because they're very interesting, but why? I mean, it's amazing how many VM pods we have. There's, there must be something about it. I, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.